in Christ, welcome to worship this third Sunday of Advent, the Sunday of joy in the traditions of the church. Uh, sometimes, and you might hear me call this Gadete Sunday, and that's just a Latin word that means rejoice. Today is the Sunday to rejoice. We use uh, pink as the color for this day. We only use pink two days a year, once in the middle of Advent for Gadete Sunday, and once in the middle of Lent, because Advent and Lent are both seasons of preparation, seasons of getting ready, and so they can be uh, a little more somber, a little more downbeat, and so the pink is a little burst of joy in the middle, so we don't get uh, too down in the midst of Advent or in the midst of Lent. And so this is a Sunday of joy. We are gathered today in the territory of Treaty 6 and the homeland of the Métis Nation uh, in order that we might be people together, that we might find joy and peace in one another, and, and in this is the spirit in which we gather today. Our core value <clears throat> is to worship joyfully. 
you can see this wonderful image of the wilkins yard with that beautiful sign of joy so if you know cheryl or marty you should send their congratulations and and thanks for this image of their yard you'll see a couple places throughout um our service here on uh this screen and uh this will help inform us as we worship joyfully we know that as the earth put out its growth and as a garden grows its seeds so to the lord god will grow justice and praise before all the nations and so let us bring our praise together with joy let's sing together and in many places uh, throughout uh, this week. We thank you, God, that you are good, that you make all things new. And so in this time of joy, we pray, God, that your joy might more and more fill our hearts, and that the words uh, that we will share this day might be on our lips each and every day, words of joy, words of justice. God, where we have fallen short of what you ask of us, where we have made mistakes, where we have hurt others, where we have sinned. 
we have not lived with the joy in our hearts that you call us to. We ask for your forgiveness, God, for your unending mercy, and for your help that we might try again to follow you, try again to be people of joy. Help us, God, we pray, this day and always, that we might be filled with joy each and every day. We ask this all in the name of Jesus Christ, who brings us our joy. Amen. Advent means to me happiness all the time. I think Advent means time to prepare for Christmas. <laughs> I think Advent means when um, Jesus was born. I think you get ready by you know with family and pray. I think we can get ready by um going to church and praying. <laughs> is Jesus? Some say Jesus is a morning star, bringing new life and hope each day with its rising. Or a great leader who brings love and justice. Who do you say Jesus is? How can you get ready for his arrival? Because the Lord has anointed me. God has sent me to bring good news to those who are poor, to bind up those with broken hearts, to proclaim, proclaim release for those held captive, in liberation for those imprisoned, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vindication for our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for all of the mourners of Zion, to give them a crown in place of ashes, oil of joy in place of mourning, 
a mantle of praise in place of discouragement. They will be called oaks of justice planted by the Lord to glorify himself. They will rebuild the ancient ruins. They will restore places that had once been deserted. They will renew the cities that have been ruined, places deserted and abandoned in generations past. For I, the Lord, love justice. I despise robbery and dishonesty, and so I will faithfully give all people their wages and make with them an everlasting covenant. Their offspring will be known amongst the nations, their descendants amongst all peoples. All who see them will recognize that they are a people blessed by the Lord. And I surely rejoice in the Lord. My heart is joyful because of my God, because God has clothed me with clothes of victory, wrapped me in robes of justice, like a bridegroom in a priestly crown, like a bride adorned in jewelry. And so as the earth puts forth its growth, as a garden grows its seeds, so too the Lord God will grow justice and praise before all the nations. And as we seek to be a people of justice and praise, there are many uh, ways this Advent, Christmas, and Epiphany seasons that we will be celebrating that. There's a few this week and uh, in days ahead I just want to lift up for us. Tonight at 7 p.m., uh, United Churches all across Saskatchewan are holding an Advent concert together. Uh, we've posted about it on Facebook, so if you, uh, when you're done here, scroll through our Facebook posts, you'll find links. You can register, it's by donation, suggested donation of $10, but whatever uh, amount in your heart is right for you is great. And uh, all that money goes to United Churches all throughout Saskatchewan. So if you can join in tonight for a time of singing, that'll be great. Uh, we ourselves here at St. Paul's on Thursday, uh, again, will embrace justice and praise and we'll be having our own carol sing at 7 p.m. on Thursday on Facebook Live. Uh, Mark and team will be taking requests and given to understand, so... Um, you, you are correct. So that will be quite joyful and a lot of fun. <laughs> and so that will be a good event to just sing uh, some of our favorite songs together. And then next Monday on the 21st, again at 7 p.m., again here in the Worship Center and on Facebook Live, We'll have a longest night service, a chance for reflection, for sharing of lament and grief and mourning, of the hard feelings that we're carrying with us this season. Uh, it's a great time if you've experienced loss, uh, if there's a friend or family member who's hurting, to come and know that God embraces us in all of our feelings this season. All of our joys and all of our sorrows, God embraces us all. I want to thank everyone for the gifts that you've been offering to the work of St. Paul's United Church, uh, gifts of many kinds and many ways, whether you're leaving offerings here in the worship center in the Agape Bowl, whether you donate every month through PAR, whether you send e-transfers, whether you find other ways to donate online, there's lots of ways people are helping out. And I want to say a thank you. Thank you for all of the ways that many people uh, lift up with joy uh, the work of this church. And through us, I believe that we are a blessing, a light of joy uh, to all the world. So let us take a moment to pray. God, I just want to say thank you for the people that you've formed and called together here to be St. Paul's United Church, a people not for ourselves, but for the world, a people rooted in Jesus Christ, and so living with such joy that that joy overflows into the neighborhood and the community of the world around us. May we be a people who continue to, out of the generosity of our hearts, out of the joy that you've placed in us, be people of kindness and compassion and justice. Help us to rebuild broken places, to care for broken hearts, to proclaim release for those held captive, liberation for those imprisoned. May this be our work and our purpose each and every day, God. We ask this all in the name of Jesus Christ, who is the greatest gift. Amen.
today our seat of learning invites us to reflect on this advent where are we experiencing joy where are we experiencing joy this advent season advent is a time of getting ready getting ready to prepare for how jesus came long ago and to prepare for the day when he will come again in glory and majesty and so it is a fitting a time to practice joy and so today our seat of learning invites us where are we experiencing joy this season if you're joining us online i invite you to type a comment uh, of where you are experiencing joy this advent season if you're here in the worship center with me uh, and if you want to shout out a story of joy that's certainly very welcome and and i'll repeat a summary for all folks to hear uh, where are you experiencing joy this advent does anyone have a story they'd like to share i got a little one yeah liam joy at the morning or when you realize you were rushing off to school and you forgot the day before a little bit of extra joy in the morning uh, when you get to open two chocolates but uh, uh, this year my girlfriend actually surprised me with like the lego star wars advent calendar and it's just like an adorable little you know joyful moment of getting to build a small lego set every every year oh. I love it. so i'm just going to repeat that so all folks can hear uh liam's family has a tradition of advent calendars and liam's girlfriend bought him this year a uh, Lego Star Wars advent calendar, yeah. And so each morning Liam gets the chance to assemble a small little Star Wars Lego, and this brings him joy. And it's also a good way of practicing patience, which is a good discipline in Advent. So I appreciate appreciate that. Mark? So just before I share mine, I want to share a comment that's come in from our dear friend Ellen Wilson. And she says she, she experiences joy in phone conversations with special people across the country. And how I'm experiencing joy, even this uh, very week, there are folks in our community who I never knew about who are looking for ways to help others in their spheres of influence. And these are people who are newer to our country and newer Canadians, and they have bought into this very Canadian value of helping one another. And so what a, what a privilege to be able to experience that. Because sometimes, you know, when you're out in the community, people don't know who else is contributing to joy in the lives of others. And then we have a comment from our wonderful friend, Debbie Bathgate, in video chat visits. Yesterday was Carrie's birthday. We had six online visits, totally several, totaling several hours. We likely had more connection with the in individuals than if we had thrown a crowded party. And from our great friend Kathy Gullen, our new grandbaby brings us joy. Congratulations. From our wonderful friends Dorian and Elaine, sending cards, making chocolates, wrapping gifts. And from our dear friend Kara Filson, I've started doing video calls instead of texts or phone calls. I've realized how much I miss the faces of my friends and family and how much joy I feel when I can see them smile without a mask. And from our wonderful friends, the Rutherfords, who are with us online, decorating the tree and house, sending out cards and letters, and that specifically comes from the wonderful Bev Rutherford. And from Brittany Phoenix online, I experience joy when I go to church and see everyone. And that's uh, Josh Griva is, is, I believe, the name attributed to that. And I want to thank Josh for bringing joy into our lives this morning with that wonderful Advent reading that he did for us this morning via video. As we prepare to receive with joy the good news of Jesus Christ, as told to us by our brother Luke, I'll invite us to rise and body your spirit as we are able and sing together Alleluia. Alleluia.
gospel reading today is from Luke. My soul declares the greatness of the Lord, and my spirit proclaims God my Savior. For God has looked upon the oppression of God's servant, and all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is God's name. God's mercy is for all who honor God. From generation to generation, you have shown your might with your arm. You have scattered the proud in their conceits. You have thrown down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the oppressed to the high places. You have filled the hungry with all that is good and sent the rich away empty. You have come to the assistance of Israel, your servant, never forgetting the promise you made to our ancestors, to grandmother Sarah and grandfather Abraham and their descendants for all ages. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray. God of joy, as we hear these words from Mary, our sister, we thank you that you have been at work in so many brave and courageous people, in Mary and Elizabeth and Zechariah and Joseph, in Sarah and Abraham, and in so many others who lead us to receive with joy, Jesus Christ. Amen. Mitchell, just before you go on, I want to share just a couple more comments that are coming in related to joy uh, from our wonderful friend, Evelyn Smith. In listening to and singing along with my Christmas CDs, especially the Messiah, which I have sung many, many years with choirs and choruses, the cats are not amused. And from our wonderful friend Kay. Kay says, good morning, and agrees that her new great-grandbaby is a major source of joy. And finally, from our wonderful friend Nancy Maloney, and a big hello to Garnet as well, and also to Mark, enjoying this season of Christmas music, sing out with joy while baking and cleaning. Thank you, everyone, for sharing your stories of joy. Our gospel reading that we just heard moments ago is, uh, comes from the mouth of a young woman named Mary. Earlier in Luke's story, we hear a little bit of her story. She is unmarried, uh, but promised to a man named Joseph. In the days of Mary, this means that she would be somewhere between the ages of 12 and maybe 14, so she is young by the standards of her day and very young by the standards of ours. And this young woman is greeted by the angel Gabriel, who tells her that God is going to do something miraculous in the world, and that Mary has the opportunity to join God as God seeks to make all things new. Mary asks some questions. She's puzzled, but in the end she says yes. She agrees to join God in the incredible things that God is doing. Now, this is an act of unbelievable courage for a young woman, 12, 13, 14 maybe, for a young woman in a tiny village of a few hundred people to agree to become the mother of the Lord, to become pregnant before she's married, knowing uh, the intense gossip that will spread through her town and region, knowing the strain that that will put on her body, the strain that that might put on her relationship, knowing all of the costs and all of the risks, Mary says yes. Mary says yes. She then goes in our story and she visits her relative Elizabeth. Elizabeth, too, has become pregnant in a miracle. And while Mary is very young, Elizabeth is very old, past uh, the age at which women often have children, at which people often have children. And so Elizabeth, uh, echoing the story of Sarah, who too uh, was past the age at which people often become pregnant, uh, Elizabeth celebrates her miraculous pregnancy. And Mary stays with her for three months until Elizabeth gives birth to the baby John. John will grow up to become John the Baptist. Jesus' cousin and friend and forerunner. 
And while Mary is with Elizabeth, Mary sings this song, the Magnificat, from the Latin words for its opening. In English, we say, my soul declares the greatness of the Lord. And in Latin, that, that phrase begins with the word Magnificat. And so we often call this song, this poem, the Magnificat. In composing this, Mary turns to the stories of her faith. Mary turns to the song of Hannah, herself becoming miraculously pregnant with the prophet Samuel in, com in composing uh, her song. Mary turns to the Psalms, looking at Psalm 113. Mary perhaps even looked at the prophet Isaiah, who we read earlier, and weaves these stories of her tradition and her faith into something new for her moment. Because in Mary's song, she remembers that what God has promised to her ancestors and to ours, God is now doing in her life for all the world. Mary has heard the promises that God made to her ancestors, the promises made to Sarah and to Abraham, that their descendants would be a blessing to the world, the promises made to the people as they uh, left slavery in Egypt and prepared for freedom in the new and promised land, promises to always be with them, promises sustained through the prophets that our God is a God of justice, promises made again and again and reaffirmed, and in Mary's day, promises that might seem like they were from long ago. Because in Mary's day, her people were no longer free. Her people had been conquered, conquered by a foreign power headed in the city of Rome who had extended their might throughout uh, much of the areas around the Mediterranean. And everywhere they went, they brought Roman laws, Roman ways of doing things. There were Roman soldiers who exacted taxes to pay for more Roman conquest. And so Mary's people were not free. They were conquered and oppressed. And Mary herself lived in a tiny village. And Mary uh, grew up in, we have to imagine, uh, under this system, great poverty. But Mary did not lose faith in the promises that God had made her ancestors, that God was going to do something that would change the world, that would forever reorder how things are into greater peace and justice. And so filled with these words of prophecy, filled with the memory of how God had done amazing things in the past, Mary says yes to God and composes this song that she gifts to the world of seeing what God is doing and how Mary herself joins in that. That Mary becomes the mother of the Lord. That Mary becomes, uh, through her cooperation with God, part of the story. And so all generations will call her blessed, she says. And so too do we call Mary blessed. And Mary, in her song, realizes that joy is not just a state of mind. Joy is not just the moments that we are happy. But joy requires a commitment to the belief that the world can and will and should be different than it is today. That this is not the way that things are supposed to be, and that God is going to do what God has promised. And so in our day, we too see injustices, we too find ways where we feel trapped, lost. But Mary believed, and so do we, that what God has promised in the past, God will do again. What God does in Mary, uh, in bringing to the world Jesus Christ, God is doing not just for Mary's time, but for all time. All generations are blessed through what Mary does through what Jesus Christ accomplishes for us in his life and teaching and his death for us on the cross and in his resurrection to new life. What Jesus does, what Mary participates in, we are all invited to participate in. A new kind of world where the mighty are thrown down from their thrones, where the rich are sent away empty, and instead it is the oppressed who are lifted up. It is the hungry who are filled with good things, where the way that we've set some people on top and some people below is flipped upside down, a great reversal, a revolution. 
this is what the story and message of jesus always is about and mary gets it because she knows the stories of her faith the stories that sustained her people through moments of great tragedy and despair this is what true joy is not ignoring the ways that life is hard not pretending that those don't exist but believing trusting having faith that as god has acted again as god has acted in the past so too god will act again this is what true joy is founded in it's the joy that mary sings and gifts to us it's the joy that we now are called to bring to our time our time where we see glaring injustice our time where we see environmental degradation and growing climate change our time where the centuries of racial injustice on this continent are laid bare our time where a pandemic has shown uh, just how little we are caring for one another and how much better we can do in this time we need to hear mary's song of how god will fill the hungry with all that is good how god will lift up the oppressed to the high places how god will throw down the powerful how god will send away the rich that god will do something new as god has done before so too god will do again this is god's promise to us in every time in every generation and so in our generation we can have hope and peace and joy knowing that jesus christ is the same yesterday today and forever amen
down to the table. We gather as our ancestors in faith have, trusting that as God has acted in the past, so too God will again. If you're joining us at home, we'll invite you to have with you something like bread and something like wine or like grape juice to celebrate this together. We know that our God is good, that God has blessed us from ages past, that as God made promises to Sarah and to Abraham, as God made promises uh, to and through the prophets, as God worked in the life of Mary, so too we know that God is at work now. We know that though the world might be a place of injustice, that God does not abandon us. And so God sent forth God's own self to be with us as Jesus Christ. He was born to a young woman, unmarried, poor, conquered. She was in so many ways in her day one of the last and least of society, one of those most pushed to the edges, one of those most oppressed. And she is the one who said yes to what God was doing. She was the first in her body to contain and hold the Lord. She was the first in her hands to hold the Lord as he was born. And so what Mary accomplished is what makes what we do now possible. For the boy that she gave birth to would grow up and teach a way grounded in love and in justice and in joy. But his witness to justice was threatening since the powers of his day, the powers that had conquered his ancestors, put him to death. But death never has the last word because joy comes with the dawn. And so he formed by his spirit a new people, the people that we are now. And he gifted to us on the night that he was betrayed a story and a practice. He was gathered for a meal with his friends, a Passover meal, which remembered how God had acted in the past and God would act again, how God had led the people out of slavery and into freedom. And each year, his people, as they continue to do so, celebrate this with a meal. And over the course of that meal, he took a piece of bread. He broke it and he offered thanks and he gave it to his friends saying, take this and eat. This is my body broken for you and for the world. Each time you do this, Remember me. In the same way, after the meal, he took wine, the common drink of his people, crushed from grapes, and pouring out upon the ground, just as his body would be crushed upon the cross, and his blood would pour out upon the ground. He took this wine, he offered thanks, and he gave it to his friends, saying, take this and drink. This is my blood blood for a new covenant, blood for the forgiveness of sins, poured out for you and for the world. Each time you do this, remember me. And so we do remember how Jesus came long ago, how Mary held him in her hands as we hold him in ours. And we pray that the Holy Spirit who is at work in Mary's heart and is at work now might be at work in us and might transform these gifts into the body and blood of the Lord, and might transform us into the hands and feet of the Lord, the hands and feet of Jesus Christ in this time and this place, bringing joy and justice and praise everywhere we go. And so we know that this is Jesus Christ, broken for us and for the world. And we know that this is Jesus Christ poured out for us and for the world. If you are uh, joining us at home, I'll invite you to take your piece of bread. If you're joining us at here, I'll invite you to open uh, your cup and take out the little wafer and to eat, knowing that this is the body of Jesus Christ, broken for us and for the world. In the same way, I'll invite you to take your cup. For those who are joining us here, a little bit of juice at the bottom of your cup and to drink and know that this is Jesus Christ.
poured out for us and for the world. As we have shared in this meal today, as we have held Jesus Christ in our hands as Mary did so long ago, as we now know that Jesus Christ is in our bodies as Jesus was in the body of Mary, may we know that what God is doing, what God has promised to do, God is doing now in us and in all the world. We pray, God, that this meal that we have shared together might change our hearts and might change our world, that we might be a people of joy, that we might rebuild the deserted places in our lives, that we might proclaim release to those held captive, liberation to those imprisoned, good news to the poor, that we might know that all who hunger are filled with good things, that all who are oppressed are lifted up. This is the joy you promise us, God. And so in the name of Jesus Christ, we have shared and celebrated at this table together. We say, thanks be to God, and amen. as we go from this place and this time, as we go into the rest of our day and the rest of the world, may we carry the joy that we have experienced and tasted here. May we carry that joy in our hearts to be a blessing to the world, a blessing to all nations as God promised to Grandmother Sarah and Grandfather Abraham, as God invites us to be. As God has acted in the past, we know that God is acting now. And so may we go with the courage of Mary, the courage to say yes to God, to join God in all things, because we know, deep in our hearts, that while sorrow may endure for the night, that joy comes with the dawn. Amen. Oh, make a difference.